Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we are joined by a special LA Dodger, Mookie Betts. Hi, Mookie. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So, so glad to have you join us today. I'm glad that you were able to take the time. We're very excited for you to be with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, As we start, I do want to maybe backtrack a little bit um, just to, you know, your upbringing. I know you grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, curious to know, you know, what it was like for you growing up there and how was that transition going from, you know, your childhood in Nashville to starting your MLB career in Boston and then just now being in L.A.? Yeah, um, growing up, I had a really, really good childhood. I My parents did an amazing job with me. Um, they put me in all types of spots to be successful, um, put me around a lot of kids, a lot, of, a lot around a lot of sports. And so uh, they definitely, you know, made my childhood a, a really good childhood. And I think that definitely helped me growing up, you know, just being around a lot of kids, being around a lot of adults, you know, being around a lot of different situations. And so um, that definitely helped mold me to to who I am today and uh, going Going to Boston, um, I was 18 years old when I went to Massachusetts for the first time, which is really leaving Nashville. I never didn't know where, where Massachusetts was. Right. And uh, going there, that was a, a completely new experience. Uh, it was it was tough. It was tough. I had my wife at, now, but my girlfriend at the time, she had to come up and uh, kind of keep me sane, keep me grounded. My my best friends as well. Uh, my parents, you know, so it was a a. a team effort to to keep me mentally sane um you know especially when I was 18 and 19 years old and then when I eventually got to Boston that was a complete culture shock as well yes. um you know coming from Nashville being I was around a, a melting pot and you know when you go to Boston you hear you know <clears throat> there that's that town is you know the, you hear the race about the racism and all those type of things and so of course I didn't I didn't, I didn't experience that at all my my time in Boston was absolutely wonderful I, i'm very happy i got that chapter in my life and um but it was tough as well you know being young and, and having to go to a market like that and perform you know that, that's that's really tough uh but it i think it made me mentally tough and physically tough and, and everything else and then uh played what well, played it played well for those those i think five or six years and then uh came to la which was completely different completely yeah. different ever seen uh I, I culture remember, shock right <laughs> yeah that, that's the biggest one that's the biggest one i remember i tell telling my agents and my wife i don't want to go anywhere west of uh i want to say was the mississippi i think i said i want to i don't want to go anywhere wow. west of the mississippi yeah um just because i you know the, my time in new york I'm, I'm not in new york let me stop this no you're totally fine uh, stop listening i don't know how you can answer this Okay, there we go. My time in my time in uh in Boston and, and, and all those type of things, being on the East Coast, I, I never went west. And so right. the times that I went out there, I hated it. Traffic, all those other type of things. Uh, okay, I can I understand that. <laughs> you know, it, it's yeah. di it's different. The, the mu music's different, everything is different, right? And so um I think once I signed here, I I, I was I was way more open minded to accepting the differences yeah and now um and now actually going back east is weird it's being 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 out west is is uh pretty normal right and i was gonna say so now do you think that maybe you you know not saying of course comfortable right you feel more comfortable being out here but you know now that you've got to experience like the city and just living here and you know seeing the culture I would say like up close you know not just we're not just traffic and you know like during rush hour and things like that would you feel that um you know I don't I don't want to to put you any problems but like west coast best coast like are you kind of more just like okay I get it now I get it you know I, I do I truly do understand I truly do understand the opportunity for life out here um is, is plentiful I mean it, it is so many things but if you have dreams, you can definitely achieve them out yeah. here. There, there, there's plenty of uh, tools to to pick from. And, yeah. and, you know, there's plenty of people out here and uh, you just got to sift through it. It, it. It's tough, but you got to sift through it and, and find the right people. And, you know, L.A. is amazing. Yeah, no, for sure. And honestly, love to hear that. You know, I'm a big Dodger fan, so. For sure. When, you know, you came to us in 2020. I was like, dude, there's no way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that you, you know, loved it. And, you know, you've 
um, welcome the city with open arms. Just like, you know, I would say that the city has welcomed you. I, I'd love to hear that, you know, for your career and everything. Um, Cause definitely you've been able to accomplish a lot of great things um, on the field. You know, you've been in the league for almost 10 seasons and you've won two championships during that time, but also off the field, you know, you definitely mm -hmm. have your contributions. Um, and, you know, recently I've heard that you um, have an up and coming AAU basketball program mm -hmm. that has been, you know, making, Making headlines in the AAU community. Can you tell us about that and, you know, how that even started or, you know, what was the goal behind creating a program like that? Uh, yeah. So, uh, how is basketball is like, I would say basketball is probably my first love. I, I loved it. Grew up playing it. I mean, anything I'm a basketball junkie. Like I'll go to any game. I don't, I don't care who's playing. Right. And so, um, <clears throat> as I grew the people that I played with, um, we all kind of, we grew up together and then they're in Nashville and, and they're affecting kids in Nashville. They're coaching kids, they're training kids, they're coaching at schools and all those, all those things. And I, I saw that. And then you see like Brandon Miller and Darius Garland, guys like that who don't have an AAU team in Nashville really to play with. Those guys go to surrounding States yes. to play, which I wholeheartedly understand. If I was them, I would as well. And so that's where I saw, well, if we can get kids like this in Nashville, let's keep them there. You know, that that's where their home, their home is. They get used to being there. there. It's, it's always better being at home. You know, you know, it's yeah. always better. So having all those trainers and all those people that I play with that are now training and coaching the, the youth, I feel like it created an opportunity for them to also grow and, you know, go to colleges and, and whatnot and expand their uh, network and just you know to keep kids local you know it's all it's all it's 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 cool when you have a, a team from Nashville full of you know D1 guys going to wherever to yeah. play versus you have a, a kid from Nashville a kid from Georgia a kid from Cali a kid from Texas all coming in one team and I'm not saying that's there's anything wrong with that but I do I would like you know uh, I'm from Nashville and I I feel like you know there there are there's a lot of talent in Nashville and yeah. See, Mookie is uh to show it's here to show it. No, for sure. And you know, obviously when you're in the AU like lifestyle, it's very much a lifestyle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, they're young, they're kids, but um being like you said, being away from home is is tough. And um, you know, with you stressing the importance of it being Nashville based, do you maybe hope to see that it branches out into other cities or you know, that team Mookie kind of go you know obviously LA and like other cities already have a lot of like AAU programs but just in for your name you know for the program would you like to see it branch out um yeah I, I'm not sure I think I want to do whatever's best for the boys whatever's best for the coaches I um, mean you know, whatever's best for everyone and if if branching out a little bit maybe pulling a couple more kids you know giving them opportunities that they may not already have um Absolutely. You know, I, th that's what the program is for. It's, it's for the kids. Obviously, there are coaches and, and people that benefit from it, but it's more important for the kids to, to get an opportunity, you know, because that's that's really all you can kind of ask for as a kid is just an opportunity to play. And then after that, you know, you kind of got to let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, for sure. Of course. I love to hear that, though. And, you know, same thing. Love basketball as well. Definitely when, you know, Dodgers brought it home in 2020, that was special for the city. It was not only, you know, the Dodgers winning the championship, but the Lakers as well. Um, yeah. So being that you are, you know, such a big basketball fan, I'm sure that being a part of Jordan brand has like mm -hmm. some significance to you. Um, so what was it like, you know, just being getting that call or, you know, being like, hey, like, we want you to be a part of Jordan brand. Like, how surreal was that moment for you? I'm sure, like, thinking back to your childhood and, you know, um, your aspirations of playing basketball, I'm sure you played with Jordans and things like that. And now mm -hmm. being able to represent the brand in that way, how did that feel for you? Oh, it's, I mean, it's amazing. You, you can't really put in the words. Um, you know, as you're growing up, you see, you know, the Griffies and, and all these people that are bigger than bigger than life like Jordan. And so that's who you kind of aspire to be. Right. And and you want to have their legacy and, and whatnot. And, and uh, so when I got that opportunity, that the call and they said, you know, welcome to Jordan brand, you know, I'll never forget it. You know, you know now I, now I'm, I can wear the Jordans. I don't have to go stand in line and, 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 and you know, put in hours and, and 
online and, and, you know, doing all these things to try and get shoes when, you know, I get the shoes and I get the clothes and, you know, I, you know, whenever you put on a pair of Jordans, you just feel better no matter what, you know? And so um, getting to wear those every day and on the field, I mean, you just, the, the confidence and the swag just kind of exudes without you even trying, you know, yeah. I think you get compliments on shoes and, you know, for me, I, I I wear them all the time, so I don't think about it as much. But when I hear compliments of, like, hey, you got some nice shoes or, or or whatever, it kind of brings me back like, hey, you know, you you're with team you're with team Jordan, uh, you're with Jordan brand. And, and that's a, a, a very uh, great opportunity for you. No, for sure. And I'm sure, you know, it, it goes back to to like to childhood, because when when you were seen stepping in some Jordans, it was like, wait, hold on now. Like, you yeah, know, oh, yeah, you got absolutely. the heat on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> would you say that you have like a favorite pair of maybe like retro cleats or Jordan cleats that they've done for you or that you had made or something that you know you've worn on the field? Um, I think this year my favorite ones, I, I made some fours. And I think those are going to be the my favorite cleats that I, I'll have I'll have made so far to date. Um, I'll let you uh, I'll debut those in the season and, and okay. let that come out. But I would say my 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 shoe that I wear the most and that is just a classic. It's just the just the retro ones. I mean retro that ones. that's they go with anything. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. You can, you know you can kind of do whatever you want in them. And so I, I know it's super basic answer but I mean it's kind of hard to beat beat a retro one no for sure I mean that's the shoe that like started it all right so is mm -hmm. it is it basic or it's just like the pioneer for it all right yeah it could be the pioneer. I think it's the pioneer I agree with the pioneer. yeah and would <laughs> you say um like style like you know the Chicago was that it would that be like the one um, I, you, 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 you could have you could argue that I, I really it's just anyone yeah right. any, anyone um any original one. I know they make some mids and, and the lows, you know, obviously a lot of people love the the low ones, but I just like the high top ones. You know, that's just, uh, just the retro. It doesn't matter the colorway. They go with anything, you know, you can wear the, you can wear any colorway with any clothes and any no matter what, it's, it's going to look good. You know, yeah, it's going to look you know, good. So. For sure. For sure. Well, I love, I love to hear that. And I'll definitely be peeping to see, you know, those <laughs> fours in this season, you know, um, right. but I am happy to say that JD Sports will be donating fifteen thousand dollars to Team Mookie and the fifty fifty. Oh wow! Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you, thank of course. you. Yes, you know we want to continue the mission. Um, but you know, for some of our viewers who might not know, what inspired you to create the fifty fifty foundation? Truthfully, um, it started with wanting to give kids in the hospitals, um that didn't have the money for surgeries or medicine or whatever it is that they need. That's where it started. It was really just filling in those gaps that kind of go missed. You know, it's easy to go give, you know, $10,000 to the, to the hospital, but it's different when you pay for a kid's surgery, pay for a kid's hospital bills or, or whatever it is. And you're relieving not just the kid, but the family as well. Like, you know, so that's kind of where it started. And, now we kind of uh my wife is what who is who really runs it all uh but now we kind of expand like we do the hospitals with the kids and now we're getting in the community and just doing some community work as far as just going out and just giving out turkeys and you know christmas drives for presents and all those type of things and uh, you know we really just it's really just affecting the youth because that's who is going to shape our country you know when they're older and so we want to create opportunities and and ways of life for them, give them opportunities for them to become lawyers and, and whatever, whoever they will aspire to be, you know, that all you have to do is create an opportunity for them. And that's really all we can control and let them, uh, let them do their thing. No, for sure. That's amazing, truly. And I'm so glad that, you know, it's something super like close to home, you know, with you and, and your wife being able to do that. Would you say that, you know, there was a, maybe like a memorable moment for you that, you were just like, I'm so blessed to be able to, you know, do this or like use my platform to do this for you, you know? Yeah, I remember uh, <clears throat> there was a family in Nashville that my mom, myself and my wife went to visit. And Caden uh, is his name. And he had a, he had a rough go. They couldn't pay for bills and and, what, so, so, and whatnot. So we went and, and paid for the bills and ended up getting 
uh, his family a car and, and getting them Christmas presents and seeing them come to the boat. We was a bowling chair and a charity event, seeing them come and appreciate, you know, thank us. And then now we're still, we're family friends. And that is what registered, like hit home for me is, you know, just doing something that we look at as, you know, it's a pretty simple thing. You know, I have the platform to go pay for someone hospitals, hospital bills and give them a car and maybe not understand the effect that it has on them. Of course. And for them to kind of let me know how much it affected them or, or in a positive ma- manner, it definitely, uh, it, it, it pulled on the heartstrings for sure. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Truly. I love that. And I'm sure it just, you know, deepens that connection and that emotional connection with like the family and just the foundation. So that's amazing that you do that. And I'm, I'm so glad to to hear it, you know, and definitely know that JD sports is, you know, being able to continue that um, because it's, it's amazing why you do it, you know? Um, and, you know, for you, obviously you, you do it all, you have it on the field, off the field. Um, and I, you're still so young, you know, truly, um, it might not feel that way, I guess, like in playing, right? In baseball but, terms, yeah. Yeah, you know, in ball terms, but truly as as a, a human, you are so young. Um, what do you look forward to, you know, in this like new chapter of your life? Um I'm and- not sure. I, I think I think I'm just kind of just taking it day by day, you know. Um there's so many things that come and go, so many highs and lows that it's hard to really look so far in front of you and and, because if you do start looking that far in front of you you kind of miss what's going on right now and so you know I I really just want to uh make sure that I I I focus on the now you know be with my my little girl while she's five you know she's just turned five and I gotta I want to enjoy her being five and then enjoy her being you know enjoy just each moment my son you know he has he's not one yet he's eight uh eight months but Oh, just enjoy God. these, you know, just enjoy these times and, and where I'm at in life because, you know, you blink an eye and, yeah. you know, it's 10 years later and, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to look back and wish that I uh, was in the moment a lot more when I was younger. Right. No, I think that that was beautifully said for sure. Time goes so quick. And um, honestly, like, you know, if you don't stop and enjoy it, it's just gone, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that was beautifully said and definitely for your kids, those are the, the precious years. So definitely, you know, take those memories and, and hold on to them. Cause I know for sure with my niece, it's like, ugh, once they're not young anymore and like so little, mm-hmm. you're just like, what? So let me just go back to those times. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. And then, you know, because now just dealing with life and seeing, you know, what you've been able to accomplish for yourself. Is there maybe like a piece of advice that you would give your 18 year old self today um, that, you know, now, or that you learned along the way? Um, I would say, I would say not to stress so much, you know, I think when I was younger and I wasn't playing well, or I wasn't doing whatever well, like I would, I would just stress and, and, want to try and fix it and want to try and get out of the valleys when I was in the valleys. And now that I'm a little older, it's like, well, when you're in the valleys, that's the learning season. That's how you get out of the valleys. You you have to use these valleys to get to the peaks. And I got so busy trying to get out of the valleys that I was just really just digging myself deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, this is all stress related. Right. And so then you, you, you know, you're not sleeping great at night and you're, you know, making bad decisions, you know, going, just going out and just you're not really being present in the moment, not really being yourself and you're not really enjoying the highs, just like the lows, you know? And so now it's like when, when I'm in a high, I enjoy it. But when I'm in a low, I enjoy it as well. And that's why I feel like now my highs are high. My lows are not as low. I can get out of the low as uh, uh, quicker because I feel like I use those as, as a learning season. And so I would tell myself definitely to uh, enjoy the highs, but also enjoy the lows because that's, uh, you know, that's, that's when you grow. Yeah, for sure. And definitely they make you who you are, you know, and mm-hmm. obviously like with what you went through, it's, you've come out on top. You've definitely like done so much for yourself, so much for your family, for other families, you know, being able to pay that back towards the community and things like that. So I'm so happy to hear that Mookie and definitely, you know, 
some some big news broke, you know, this week. So I'm excited as a Dodger fan. Mm-hmm. For what's to come for you know the team and for you? Um, and I wish you guys the the very best in the season to come. Definitely gonna come out there, and I'm gonna be looking for those four and be like, okay, yeah, please do. That he told me about. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I appreciate you so much for taking the time to you know sit here with me and 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 talk with me and you know be here for JD Sports. Um, but thank you so much and thank you, wish you the best. Yes, ma'am. You have a good one. I'll make sure I'll wear those fours for you, Jocelyn. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> All right. All right. You too. Bye. All right.